After ramping up the main Desert Treasure 2 grinds, I've been working on goals like fun collection lock slots and pet hunting while we wait for the new big Valamore region early next year. I also cover Valamore stuff recently, so link at the top if you're interested in learning about Valamore and its cool rewards. Anyways, we will cover a very powerful spite weapon that I've been using a lot for pet hunting while showcasing major pet hunting progress. As the title says, it is the Ancient God Sword, aka Zaro's God Sword. I will show you all the places where I found the Zaro's God Sword to be great at and how to maximize its potential. Before we go into the details of my progress in the Ancient, aka Zaro's God Sword, you probably just want to know the general idea behind this weapon. Zaro's God Sword is a very accurate spec weapon that deals high damage to your opponent while also healing you 25 HP every time you land a spec. So overall, it is a very good spec weapon to use in various EVM situations where you take consistent damage like Ardorvis. You've probably also seen it being used in PKing as well. It is definitely a very versatile weapon. <laughs> like any God Sword, it is a 3.6 second 6 tick attack speed. Two-handed melee weapon with a very high slash accuracy and strength. So it hits quite high, but it is low. The main attraction is the special attack. Like all God Sword special attacks, the Zara's God Sword special uses a 50% special with double accuracy, making it super accurate at most places and also hits high. The special attack's basic can hit upwards of 60s and 70s on task. It has a secondary hit that happens 4.8 seconds later. The enemy will take 25 extra magic damage guaranteed if you land the spec, and you will heal for 25 HP as well. Even if you hit a 1 base special, the enemy will soon take 25 magic damage and give you 25 HP back. However, you can only heal 25 HP if the enemy has at least 25 HP at the time the HP drain attack happened, which is not too hard to set up. The secondary effect is what makes this weapon so versatile if you use it properly. Now we'll get into more useful application of this weapon in various places. First, let's talk about my favorite place to use these Zara's God Sword so far, Fedorvis. I just happen to be grinding for Dorvis for pet hunting, so we'll be covering all that progress and showcase how to use the God Sword there mostly. Disclaimer, I do use Sobe Brax or Fedorvis, which makes special attack weapons a bit more complicated to use, especially the Zara's God Sword. Outside of the Soul Reaper Axe though, the God Sword spec is super easy to use with any other weapon during PVM, like the Scythe, like the Fang, and even non-melee weapons. I'll explain more of that in detail later. You simply want to activate the Zara's God Sword spec when you have around 70 HP or lower, and the boss has at least 1 to 200 HP. The reason is simple, you want to deal good damage while also getting 25 HP back. I will go over this simple technique throughout the different bosses. So don't worry if you don't understand what I just said. If you're doing Fardorvis with a weapon like Fang or Scythe, you typically want to use the special near the Enrage phase, so around 200 HP. Your HP should easily be below 80 at this point, so you can use the Zaros GS spec to do a lot of damage to the boss, and then you also get a heal. This makes the Enrage phase go by a bit smoother since you'll be eating less during the Enrage phase. Eating hard food during Enrage phase makes the fight significantly longer because the boss will punish you more if you keep the enrage phase going for too long. Now let's get onto the Soul Reaper Axe strategy with the Zara's God Sword because that is the best assault weapon of Ardovis, so it's good to learn about it. I find Ardovis really enjoyable with the Soul Reaper Axe and Zara's God Sword combo. It's like they were meant to be together. I decided to go for the pets and greenlock this boss. In a previous video, I covered where the Soul Reaper Axe is best or good at and mentioned Soul Reaper is the best in slot at Ardovis. General rule of thumb is, if you happen to be using the Sword Rax for any non-raid melee boss, the Zaro's God Sword is incredibly good for helping you offset the HP drain of the Soul Reaper charging. How I pair the Zaro's God Sword with the Soul Reaper Axe is pretty straightforward. I typically use the Zaro's God Sword spec either at the beginning of or towards the end of the fight. The reason for this is because you want to maintain the Soul Reaper Axe stack as long as possible to keep that maximum damage boost potential with the Axe. I usually use the God's Respect at the start because the delay healing helps me offset the first 8 damage I take from stacking Soul Reaper charges and any damage I receive from the enemy. For example, I like starting with the Zara's God's Respect when I have about 80 to 90 HP then swapping to Soul Reaper because the Soul Reaper will bring my HP down by 8 after the first hit but the God's Respect delay damage will heal me for 25 
getting me back to around 4 HP. If I start the fight at 4 HP, I will use a different weapon other than Soul Reaper, for example like a Fang, and wait for the boss to get me down to around 8 HP. Then I will use the Sorrow Scott for spec and then switch to Soul Reaper Axe so that way I can get the most out of that healing. Occasionally, due to mistakes or bad RNG at Fardorvis, I will take too much damage and I'm forced to release the Soul Reaper Axe charges mid guild to gain my HP back so I don't die. If that happens, the boss usually has like 200 HP so I can use my backup Zara's God's Respect and heal and then use Fang or Scythe for the rest of the kill. The God's Respect does good damage and heals you reliably, meaning I don't have to eat food. Eating food mid kill typically slows down your kill times quite a bit. From my experience, with the death charge spell activated every kill, I can do about 1 Zara's God's Respect per kill. The spec will land about 80% of the time, if done right, with a Blood Fury combination. Most Vardorvis kills using Zara's God's Respect and Blood Fury won't require you to eat food mid kill. You typically only need to eat after the kill. However, don't expect to not eat food mid kill if you're still learning how to do Vardorvis, especially with a Soul Reaper Axe, it takes quite a bit of practice. Anyways, these strategies apply pretty much anytime you use Soul Reaper Axe with Zara's God Sword, not just at Fardorvis. Alright, we gotta use this. Oof, 95 with the Zara's God Sword coming up, boys. We just hit it 70 and then a 25 heal. Alright, so we are trying out some Vardo pet hunting with our new setup, the Belcher Ring. I already tested the max hits. Unfortunately, um, I do lose two max hits versus Ultra with the Axe and max charges, but look at the slash accuracy on this thing though. Oh my god. 186, that's absolutely insane. Also with the Fang too, it's pretty nice. So as God Sword will uh, heal me more often too. It's okay, I'm gonna use the spec. I'm not gonna do anything. Nice. Use Star's God Sword spec to heal and KO it. It's been over an hour. With the Belter Ring setup, and uh, I'm getting over 34 kills an hour. That includes banking and everything, too. Into 58. Holy. Bro, what is this kill? Jesus, man. I slaughtered this guy. Whoa, new PB. What the hell? 45.6? <laughs> What the hell? Oh my god, dude. I think my lowest hit with the axe was like a 50, though. And I did not miss a single time. I wasn't ready. Ah. Uh, god damn, that's... What? I died too? How? <laughs> what? Okay, that was bullshit. <laughs> that was sick. I healed a 40 back and then Blood Fury healed me a 20. What? No, I got a, another axe head. Lol. <laughs> nice, we hit 1400 KC. I guess 100 more kills and we're halfway. Oh, nice. I hit 1500 KC recently. That means we are halfway to the pet rate. Okay, we need some blood fairy charges. I got 10 of these. Now we have 8. Oh, what? You're right. One of the boys was like, dude, I have a feeling uh, it's coming up. Pretty nuts. <laughs> I got my second one now. Lucky for both, I guess. Nice, we'll take it. Okay, that's pretty good. We did a lot of kills today. 1700 KC. Now we are over halfway to the pet rate. All right, boys, we are going to have to do a quick farming mission here to refill this bombless bucket with Ultra Compost. Because as you can see, I only have 46 left. But... It's uh, okay because look, I have a thousand super composts. A while back, there was some PVM that I did and I got a bunch. So we're going to quickly just mine some volcanic ash, just turn these into ultras and then put them in the bombless bucket. We are using prayer pots a lot right now. Okay, we've done it. I can actually do this thing called bank notes, which takes out everything noted really good because otherwise it'd be kind of tough to do 27 at a time or whatever. So now I can just do this, put all of that in there, and there you go. Now I got 2,000 because it doubles, right? So 2,000 Ultra Compost. I was away for five days in New York because I was working on running my first ever marathon. Uh, we survived, and I was in New York for a few more days. So whenever we had downtime, I just logged in and did a quick farm run on my phone. And I stocked up quite a bit of prayer potions because, yep, we need stock up for that for dover's pet hunting we are now officially two thirds of the way to the boss pet rate oh yo surprise 
Okay, that's some bullshit. You saw that? It spawned inside the pillar. Wow. In 2,000 kills, I've never seen it physically spawn inside a pillar. Mm, yeah, that torture switch has been working really well. I've been saving significantly more blood fairy charges. <laughs> if I get a lot of food and I'm healing really well with the blood fairy, I don't even actually have to use my axe special, which means I can just keep my axe charges for the next kill. I do lose two charges though while waiting, but I keep three, so that means I already start off with 18% damage boost. I only have to charge twice, only losing 16 HP. This is pretty ideal. Always nice to AFK some virus and get some extra blood charge. You never know how many you need for future content, and I might actually need more for Fardovis. We'll see. Oh, nice. Not even out with the fans, boys. 2,400 kills. Uh, we are now 600 away from the average. I've done the last three kills without any food, so uh, yeah, Zars Godsword is just pulling through with the Blood Fairy assist. Nice, I still got the death charge. Oh, oh my god, no way, dude. I heard the noise. Yeah, that's my third one. Ring of Life, man. Oh my god, Furtis Mass? Holy shit, that's my second one ever. Let me show you guys my food right now. So, we are looking good. Except the Mantas really got uh, messed up here. But I do have a lot of raw Mantas still. I have 10,000, so... It's not actually that bad or anything, but I should probably start using some of these sharks too. Yeah, I'll probably do that, honestly. Nice. Oh, nice. Chromian ingot. I can make more rings, I guess. 2600 KC, boys. 400 more to the rates. Let me charge this thing up here. Where we got it? Okay. All right. After I use this, I will have seven left. Oh, man. Finally, he's dead. Holy clue, yes! On 2,700 kills too. Perfect. Hey, you guys ever wonder how much damage the capture special does if you don't actually click on it? Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm dead. Well, I gotta, I gotta leave now. <laughs> Shit, I didn't even realize I had the capture. Yo, look at my character. Oh my god, I glitched my character, bro. Oh, it fixed itself. Wow, that was hilarious. What? How did I dodge that? I did not think that was possible. All right, 3000 KC on drop rate, and we did not get it. Dang, boys. Not complaining, so probably another thousand kills. Yeah. Oh, Chrome Ingot. Nice. All right, looks like I have no choice but to. Eat. Oh, Aros got sore first hit into Blood Fury proc. 3500 KC, boys. Kind of a cool milestone. Oh wait, the axe hit me, so I'm gonna get the bleed damage. Oh my god. <laughs> so... What? No way I got Furtis Roll Bottoms, bro. Oh, no way. That's some, that's a dupe. No way, two of everything now. Oh my god. Damn, I just saw it. What? No way, I got- What the- Ah! Uh <laughs> How, dude? I just got another Virtus Roll Bottoms. No way, I do. I just got one last- Last trip. Why? Damn, I think my, my uh, pet RNG is over, dude. I'm just gonna say I don't know, because there's a lot of question marks, and I have no answers for that for those question marks, man. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> Yo, I f***ing got it right before Leaks 4, dude. Oh my god, dude. Yo, 3.7k? 5.9, oh my god. Damn, today's insane. I got two Virtus Bottoms basically two trips apart and i actually got the freaking pet oh, holy shit oh my god the first dude my first ever pet with this emo option this is so cool i definitely got a lot of mileage off of the soul reaper axe though man Three thousand kills to make the soul reaper axe i also did for Dovis an extra like three thousand plus times too with the soul reaper axe so thank you soul reaper axe dang that's so cool they even like give you the animation and the sound too for this Oh, dang, it's got different emotes, man. That's so cool. Oh, wow. It, it goes through all the different attacks that it does. Is there any more? Oh, very cool. Let's see if there's another one. Oh, and it dies, too. It, it pretend dies. That's so sick. How's it going, Butch? How could I forget? You don't have a head. <laughs> 
I mentioned that I used about one Ancient God's Respect per kill with Death's Charge, and I land about four out of five times on average, meaning that the average health per kill that I gained back from the God Sword is 20 HP. This means I've saved approximately 3,700 sharks at Fedorvis using the Star's God Sword because I've killed that many. That's a lot, and it saves me time for having to make lots often too, so definitely helps me a ton on resources and time. Now you guys probably want to know how many blood shards I used. I used somewhere between 7 to 8 blood shards because when I was keeping track of it, I was using about 1 blood shard for about 500 kills. And I did 3.7k kills. Now if you use something like a scythe, it's actually going to go by a lot faster because scythe does 2 hits. And that means you'll drain the blood fairy faster. But I didn't use that at all. I just used Fang, Star's God Sword, and the Axe, which is slow weapons that hit hard, especially the Axe. If I hit a 70, sometimes I heal off of that. It's like a 20. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with the blood shards on those. I'm going to briefly talk about the loot farm for our Dorvis. So in 3,700 kills, I got about 400 mil GP. I'm pretty sure Runelight does not keep track of the axe head values if I were to separate them from like a full story brax or the fistages. And the fistages each is about 200 mil. I think the Berserker Ring upgrades about 200 mil. So in reality, I actually made about 800 mil from 3.7k for Dovis. I'm not even going to include the axe head pieces because making a story brax is really annoying, but it would be a bit more. But yeah, 800 mil without axe head pieces. Uh, some money came from, of course, the Virtus as well. A bunch came from the Onyx bolts and the orbs, but full supplies, especially the ores, uh, the gems. Uh, we got a lot of sharks too. That's pretty nice. And I believe we get some dragon darts. Yeah, dragon dart tips as well. Yeah, if you're wondering how much money it is per hour, it's around 7 mil per hour if you do like 30 or so kills. Maybe like six, because I might have overestimated the prices of Ultra. I think they're like actually 170. I just looked at the graph. But yeah, it's like six mil an hour, uh, roughly. Still really good, I think, for most bosses. Now let's talk about other places I found Zara's God Sword to be amazing at. You're in for some surprises, most likely, because it's crazy how underused this weapon is. This weapon is actually insanely good at Hydra Boss. You might be asking, what gives? Don't you typically range this boss? Yes, you do. Tebow is definitely best in saw here, but that doesn't mean you can't bring something like the Zara's Gosser with you. Even with the range setup, as long as you aren't wearing too many negative melee style gear like Armadale or like Zara Van Braces, just putting Patty on and specking with Zara's Gosser will give you about 80% chance to land the spec. Remember, even if you hit a one spec, the Gosser will still do 25 additional damage to your enemy and heal you for 25 HP. The secondary effect is amazing because you cannot guarantee block Hydra's first attack so you will take some damage no matter what and sometimes you slack off and just make mistakes and take damage. The Zara's God Sword will easily offset all of that damage. With Death's Charge spell you can easily gain 25 HP back every single kill. If you have a Light Bearer on, you effectively have infinite healing with the Zara's God Sword here combined with Death's Charge although this is pretty overkill. You can actually pair Zara's God Sword with a different spec weapon like Zara Crossbow if you're rich. Sometimes Hydra drops a lot of food, so you might not need the Zara's God Sword heal. So you can use more DPS spec focused weapons like the Zara Crossbow, but a lot of times Hydra don't draw food, or you get lazy and make mistakes. Then you just use the Zara's God Sword spec instead to heal and stay longer. That means you can maximize your trips and still do efficient bonus damage, no matter what the situation is. Typically, I use the Zara's God Sword spec at the start of the flame phase because at that point, you've probably taken some damage or made some mistakes. Also, there's not much movement needed to lure the boss at that point, so you can easily switch into the God Sword spec for the heal right before the transition to enrage phase. In addition, if you are using a Zara Vamp braces for your range setup, I recommend bringing Ferocious Gloves to go with the Zara's God Sword because the Zara Vamps again gives a lot of negative melee stats. Putting on the Ferocious Gloves will naturally take off your Zara Fan Braces and the Gloves gives you a massive accuracy boost for your Zara's Guts Respect. You don't even need to bring Attack Pods. Keep in mind, the only reason I'm using Crystal Armor in these clips is because these clips were before Rage 3 release. I've been planning this video for a long, long time. I just wanted to wait for like another big boss where the Zara's Guts Respect was good. That's why uh, we are a Hydra with Crystal Armor. It's a bit outdated. Missouri is the play nowadays. 
Also, if you are mailing Hydra with a Lance, for example, the Zars Gossel will work even better, but pretty much the same way as range to cover your HP needs. You will also do more damage because your melee gear's extra melee strength bonus will apply to the Gossel's initial special attack hit. Sometimes you can even do close to 100 damage with the melee setup on task. You can do a 70s base special attack combined with a 25 guaranteed delay magic damage. It's not Dragon Claws, but this thing also heals you, and Claws can't do that. But I absolutely recommend the Zara's Gust or Hydra. It makes the Hydra trips consistently longer without it being too much effort. So with the Zara's Godsword strat at Hydra, I managed like 50 kills this trip. <laughs> and we got about 6 mil, so yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yes! Oh my god, I finally got the Hellhound task. Yes, that took so long. I thought I already uh, recorded a bunch of clips of the Zara's Godsword, and I honestly did. I must have deleted it by accident. Because, uh, yeah, I planned this real long time ago, and mistakes happen, but... I'm doing it for y'all. I'm getting this task so I can actually go ahead and show y'all some Zaros God's reaction with uh, melee setup and, and yeah, we're gonna go range two. Okay, we're gonna do one trip of Cerberus. I'm gonna try to make it last long, like try to make it last an hour or something. Again, we're gonna try to not use the Blood Fear as much as possible. I will tell you if I end up using it and how much, but. We're going to really just let the Saros Godsword carry us as much as possible with the healing. Saros Godsword is so good at Cerberus. The special lands around 80 to 90% of the time. So just like a Hydra, it massively improves your ability to stay longer. And just like a Hydra, you can easily use Saros Godsword even if you're doing a ranged setup Cerberus. Cerberus is not tanky, so the Godsword spec will land and even one damage will get you that heal. But I do recommend Feral Gloves, especially if you're using like Zarya Fan Braces. Because that gives you quite a lot of negative melee. So Feral Gloves will be the fix for that. But back to melee Cerberus though. Because that's what I usually do. But with the melee setup. Saros Godsword becomes not only a good healing weapon. But also a pretty powerful spec weapon. I typically do 50 damage on average. With every Saros Godsword spec. With the melee setup at Cerberus. And I occasionally do up to 100 damage. With the Saros Godsword spec. You simply want to use the Saros Godsword spec. Whenever you're below 74 HP. As you will gain 25 HP back right after, just make sure the boss also has at least 100 to 200 HP to use the special attack. Because if you use the special and it kills the boss, you won't receive the healing effect as the boss is already dead. So for example, let's say the boss is nearly dead and you use the Zaro's God Sword spec and it has 10 HP left. Then you only will heal 10 HP since that's all the HP that it has. So keep in mind that 100 to 200 roll as always i recommend bringing death's charge to maximize your Zara's god's respects once you bring the Zara's god's respect to service you'll 100 percent notice that your trips are smoother and just longer all right we just put on the blood fairy for the first time ever this trip and uh we are already 40 i want to say 45 minutes in to the trip already because yeah i only have two super combat doses left Zara's god sir managed to last me all the way to around 45 50 minutes yeah this is gonna be the range setup here good old spectral dragon knives actually first time using dragon knives for pvm so that's gonna be fun that's for the ghost and we're still gonna use the demonic offering technique of course main weapons tebow you might be asking why no ccb the problem is ccb drains your hp like crazy so i'll definitely have to bank early if i use ccb at serp so by the way, there's a 2 to 1 strategy that you can use with a weapon like a Tebow and a Scythe because they're 5 ticks. Where effectively, you can just do 2 hits, go into the boss, and then it will slow down the boss's attack, meaning you take less damage. Definitely take advantage of that strategy. It's really good. Oh, yo, nice. Freaking Primordial Crystal. Alright, boys. Uh, range setup is definitely nowhere near as good with the Zaros Gosser strategy, though. I did manage to stay almost half an hour. You might be wondering, why am I making a ring of stone? Okay, guys, we're going to show you hours worth of Serachnus. I have a Slayer task, so that should last about an hour because I picked 60. So yeah, let's figure out uh, if I can stay there for like one trip and uh, I'll tell you realistically how hard it was. I do bring the Blood Fury with me, but I'm going to try my best not to use it too much because I really want to showcase the ancient god sword as much as possible so this is only if like 
bad things happen. I haven't been in a while, so. You see? You see what I just did there with the Ring of Stone? I was able to just bypass the boss's web because of that. It's a little tricky. But I was able to pretty much do it correctly, so. Look at that. There's a little bit of a delay. I'm not used to it yet. This is how I use the Zaro's God Sword. Basically, whenever I'm kind of low HP, I just pop it on right at the start of the kill, ideally. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Really simple. And I'm just going to keep using that strat with this charge. Woo! Max it with this gear. Damn, I guess I could probably hit close to 80 nowadays. Yeah, sometimes using a Ring of Stone still makes the boss range you so you still have to be ready to pray range just in case all right guys i did 50 kills without the bluff fairy but um i think i'm gonna have to actually put it on though for these last 10 kills i didn't get that many food drops just two so i think that's kind of standard but i made a lot of mistakes though so <laughs> maybe if i didn't miss mistakes i probably could have done this whole hour without needing a bluff fairy but hey you know even with mistakes we almost made it all the way to an hour this is the last kill of the task and that's gonna get us to 60 kills and our kill rate was actually over 60 kills an hour it's 66.7 but i'm on task so if i wasn't on task it's probably like 55 or something like that but as you can see i was able to pretty easily stay here for about an hour i did do some prayer flicking though uh, to make the prayer pots last but really not too hard i mean you'll definitely stay longer than you were before and finally the other boss that i'll go a bit into detail with our scott sorat is smoke devil boss thermonuclear smoke devil this weapon is the ideal spec weapon if you plan on doing regular melee methods as the boss will do consistent damage to you every kill regular melee method kills typically gives you fast kills and with the Zara's God Sword, your truce will last significantly longer. Simply use the special whenever you're below 74 HP and the boss has around 1 to 200 HP. This criteria should be met as the boss will easily do that much damage to you every kill. Now that I have explained how to use the Zara's God Sword spec on a few bosses, I think I've beaten the strategy in your heads at this point and it's really easy to understand. Wait, I finished the task? Wow, that was so fast. And keep in mind, it's my first time back, and uh, I had died, actually, as you can see, and I still managed to get 84 kills an hour. Since this weapon is so good at healing and also do saw damage, there's plenty of other bosses that this Gosford will be good at and fun to use. I will now list some honorable mention bosses as well. You can use this weapon while mailing Abyss of Sire, Grotesque Guardians, Zami God Wars, and Bandos God Wars. I wouldn't quite say for these bosses, it'd be like essence law but it's definitely a good alternative because you can definitely bgs or claw a lot of these bosses but if you just want longer trips or switch it up i think the ancient gods will be a easy easy option but remember the general rule of thumb just use the spec when you're around 70 hp or lower and when the boss has 1 to 200 hp and that's it i hope you guys enjoy using this weapon especially if you want to prolong those trips without sacrificing too much damage